In previous videos, I covered how to set the number of columns, image sizes, and other layout features from the global parameters and the category or item options. In order to go beyond those basic options to change things such as fonts, font sizes, image alignment, and spacing between items, we'll need to delve into CSS and K2 template overrides. If you don't want to create template overrides, you can search for a Joomla template that offers K2 support. Many of the commercial templates do. Check the Extend section of the K2 site and click Templates to see some of the latest. K2 Joom also provides several templates with various K2 stylings. If you have a favorite template provider, check their website to see what they offer. For example, here's a demo of the Joomla Bamboo Vintage template. From this menu, you can see the styling for different K2 page types. In one of the earlier sessions, I worked on the Devotions section to set it up as a K2 blog. In the Category page, I have multiple columns set for the items. Due to varying title lengths and image sizes, the column layouts are not aligned vertically and don't look very attractive. The easiest way to solve the image issue is to size all images to the largest size you'll use on the site before you upload them into K2. In the K2 Parameters Images tab, you specify the width for the various sizes and K2 automatically resizes all uploaded images, but it resizes based on width alone, not on height. So if you don't start out with images that have the same height and width, you'll end up with a variety of heights for your images, which throws the vertical alignment off. Styleware, the makers of the K2 Google Maps plugin, offers a K2 image resizer. This is a commercial plugin that will automatically resize and optionally crop images so you'll end up with the exact same sizes. The resizer plugin is available for purchase on the styleware.eu website. Having the images the same size improved the layout, but there's still the problem of varying heights in the titles. Making the font size for the title smaller will help. If I right click on an item title, and click Inspect Element, I can view the CSS that applies to that element. If you're not familiar with this technique, it's covered thoroughly in the template design course. The titles use an H3 tag with a class of Cat Item Title. The CSS for that can be found in the file k2.css on line 408. All the K2 CSS for web display is found in a single file k2.css found in the Components, ComK2, CSS folder. There's also one other CSS file for print styles. If you know CSS, the file is very logically organized and easy to follow. The only problem is that the same CSS class, Cat Item Title, is used for every category title. I can reduce the font size temporarily through the Inspect Element screen to 18 pixels. That improves the look of the narrower columns, but if I scroll to the top, the font size change has also been applied to my leading items, making these titles look a little small. If I went to any other K2 menu item, all the titles on those pages would use the smaller size also. We need a way to apply different CSS styles to each K2 category. What I'm going to do is create a K2 template override and use that override along with a free plugin called CSS for K2. In order to follow the rest of this session, it will help if you have a basic understanding of CSS and HTML and know how to use FTP software. Those concepts are all covered in other courses at OS Training. Download and install the CSS for K2 plugin available at k2joom.com. Install the plugin and enable it in the Plugin Manager. I'll leave all the plugin options at the default settings. The CSS for K2 plugin allows us to associate a separate CSS file for each K2 template override. 
Next, I'll set up the files for the override. If you have your template saved on your local computer, locate the HTML folder within the template. If the template doesn't have that folder, create a folder and name it HTML. Open that folder and create another folder called com underscore k2. Open that folder. Download the k2 templates folder from your website into this folder. Go to components, com k2, and download this entire folder. Within the templates folder you downloaded, you'll see several files and a folder called default. Copy and paste the default folder. Rename the folder to whatever you want to call your template override. I'll call this one blog. Within the blog folder are the PHP files that control the content of the various types of K2 pages. These are the files you'll edit to change the page layouts. Create a new file within this folder and name it blog underscore style dot CSS. You can leave this file empty for now. This is the file that CSS for K2 will use to provide specific styling for this template override. Note that you can create multiple K2 template overrides by repeating this process. Just copy the default folder for each override and give the copied folder a new name. Within each of those folders, create a CSS file using the name you used for the override folder, followed by underscore style.css. You'll work on the modifications to the override files locally, but to see their effect on the website, the files need to be uploaded to the site. Using FTP software, create a folder in the HTML folder of your website's Joomla template, I'm in the template folder, I'll go into the HTML folder, and I'll create a folder called com underscore k2. Open that folder. Now I want to upload this whole k2 templates folder to the website. You'll end up with a folder structure that looks like this. Once you've set up the K2 template override files, you need to assign the template to a category. From the K2 Categories page, click the Select a Template drop-down. If you've placed the override files in the right location, K2 will automatically pick up the template names. I'll set the Devotions category to use the Blog template and save these settings. If I view the Devotions page, there's no change in the layout because I haven't modified any of the override files yet. But if I view the source code, I see that the override style sheet that I created, blogstyle.css, is being loaded after the default k2.css style sheet. The CSS for K2 plugin adds the style sheet assigned to that override whenever a page from that category is displayed. There are other ways you can do this, but this seems the simplest to me. This way I can use the styles provided in the default k2.css style sheet, and the only thing I need to add to the blog style.css file are the CSS styles that I want to change. Using this approach, keep the k2 default CSS enabled in the global parameters. That way the k2.css file will be loaded. It took a while to get here, but if you know HTML, CSS, and maybe a little PHP, the rest is easy. Now I can fix the vertical alignment issues for this page. By using the browser's Inspect Element option, you could use Firebug also, I can see that the category titles for the secondary items are inside a div with a class of Group Secondary in an H3 tag with a class of cat item title. 
This information will allow me to create a CSS rule in blogstyle.css that pinpoints this section. While I'm at it, I'll reduce the size of the titles for the primary columns also. The class names are very consistent using group primary and group secondary. I'll give both sections a font size of 18 pixels. The leading items are found in the div with a class of group leading. I've increased the font size there to 30 pixels. Save the CSS file and upload it to the website. We have the smaller size font on the secondary columns and the primary columns and the larger size font on the leading columns. We still don't have these quite aligned. Using inspect element again, I see that this whole section is in a div called cat item header. The author name is displayed in a span with a class of cat item author. For the primary and secondary items, I'll set a fixed height on the cat item header div. And I'll reduce the font size of the author line so I don't get the wrapping for that information. After uploading the changes, the columns now have perfect vertical alignment. These changes were all done totally through CSS. For some things you'll need to make changes to the PHP files also. Let's say for an item view, I'd like to see the rating display below the item content rather than above it. Within the blog override folder, I need to edit the item.php file. Since I know the code I need to move involves ratings, I'll search for the word rating. When you move things around, you need to make sure that you cut the entire section of code. The K2 code is very structured, making this relatively easy. Here there's a PHP if statement that checks to see whether ratings should be displayed. If so, it displays a div that includes the rating content. I'll need to highlight this entire block of code, including the PHP end if, and move it to the area after the end of the item content display. Looking at the item page again, I'd like to show the rating above the Tweet button, so I can look for that information in the PHP file to determine where to paste the code. Here I see Facebook. This looks like the end of the content section and the beginning of the social media icons. So I'll paste the rating code that I cut out earlier right here in the file. Save this file and I'll need to upload that file also into the blog override folder. Reload the page. The rating doesn't appear at the top and if I scroll down we see it is displayed below. Using these override techniques there's no limit to what you can do with changing the layout of K2 pages. You can alter the CSS for the default K2 styles or edit the PHP files and add your own classes that you can style any way you'd like. And as you've seen, it's pretty easy to move content to a different location. I've summarized the process as much as possible here. Once you've actually worked through it, it's not as complicated as it sounds.